2 Timothy 1, 7. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind. There's one source that gives you a spirit of fear. Right? That's Satan. Okay? That's the enemy. Ever say the enemy? And you have two voices coming at you every day. You can take the path of faith that is led by the Spirit of God. And this is in every single scenario of your life. This is when your spouse talks to you with blessing or with angst. In that moment, you have a choice to be led by the Spirit of God. When your child disobeys you, come on, somebody. It took me 20 minutes to drop off Lucas. Thank you, Lord. He is going to be used by the king. Um, Anybody have a child like that, right? Like the other day, he put Sharpie on the cupboard, and I'm like, oh, he's an artist. <laughs> and I take a deep breath. How many, guys, how many parents, you know? So in that moment, I could be like, what is wrong with this child? Complain. Or I could say, Lord, use this stubborn, creative, awesome child. You see? And where you land is not just where you land, it's where they land. Galatians 4, when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, Jesus, born of a woman, born under the law to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as sons. I love this line. I know I've preached this passage many times. It's one of my life passages, but, but hear me. Because you are sons. Oh, man, you hear that? Because you are sons. Everybody say, because. We're going to talk about your identity today. Because you are sons, you are no longer a slave, but if a son, an heir of God. And there are people who get saved, but then they don't get into the word every day and let the word renew their mind. People coming up to Moses, right? And they're like, it would have been better if we were in Egypt. At least there we had food. So here they were liberated, but still with a slave mentality. Everybody touch your mind for a minute. Right here is where the battle is. And you say, Jordan, isn't it all about the heart? Yeah, but listen, these two are connected. The feelings of your heart go through the filter of your mind and then come out your mouth. Okay? These two are connected. And so it's God renewing our mind, but if we're really honest, he has to change our hearts. Galatians 4, 5, and 6 teach us that we have this battle raging within us. And I don't have time to read all of those chapters, but I want to tell you, you know what I'm talking about. Even after being saved, you have times when your mind wants to go down the previous path of your old way. But here's the fact. Because of something called neuropathways, this is a, a really a scientific research, right, that has really happened a lot in the last 10 years. They've been able to see that there are pathways that in the brain are just like a rut. So if you have a rut and I pour water, the water's going to go to the rut. If I have a forest, if I have a forest, if there's a path, what am I going to do without thinking? I'm going to walk down the path. So that's how your brain works. Me and Danielle had countless hours of trauma-informed care. And I was pulling out my notes and look at them, and some of them typing in, and I'm like, I don't have time to get into all that. I just want to summarize it like this. When you have trauma, let's pretend this is trauma. This path is trauma. Well, when something can trigger that trauma, and now my brain goes down that path because it's always gone down that path. I had to fend for myself. I had to protect myself. I had to hoard food because there was no food. So now when you see food, you hoard it. That's what an orphan spirit does, but you're not an orphan. You're adopted by the father. You're adopted by the father. So what happens is so many of us are still living with some neuro pathways because we're hoping that on Sunday, Pastor Jordan's sermon will just solve my problem. I'm here to help. But you have to take ownership of your faith. You have to take ownership of your faith and say, Pastor Jordan, I'm going to get in the word every day and let the Holy Spirit, Hebrews says, renew my mind. I'm going to praise God. I'm going to say, thank you, God, that you saved me. Gratitude. Thank you, God, that you gave me an amazing spouse. God, thank you, Lord, for my house. Thank you for the roof over my head. Thank you for the food that I ate this morning. When you let the Holy Spirit renew your mind... You're building up a lifestyle and a mind of what? Joy. 
And so no wonder people are drawn to you when you start, you think like Jesus, so you act like Jesus, so people want to be around you just like people want to be around Jesus. So wisdom causes you to be reflective of your thoughts. Let me say this again, because a neural pathway, you don't know that you're in that thought. You, you, just, you just took the thought. Don't believe me. Have you ever been having a really rough day and you're having these thoughts and then suddenly you realize, oh man, why am I having, why am I so stressed out over something that stressed me out a month ago? Come on, be honest with me. Please be honest with me, Rock and Grace. And it's so wise to go, Holy Spirit, what made me stressed out to think that? What's causing me to live in this fear of this moment, a fear if they approve or fear if they like what I'm doing or fear if they, right? But if you have a mindset, right, of fear, if it didn't work out last time and the second time, then you might think, well, it's not going to work out this time, so forget it. So I'm just going to blame, complain, or gossip. Everybody says to me, blame, complain, or gossip. Sorry, the last one didn't rhyme. I'm a songwriter. I try, but it doesn't always work out. Blame, right? Well, Pastor Jordan, you don't understand. I hate my job because it's really frustrating because my boss, blame, right? Well, you don't understand because I wanted that promotion, but I didn't get it, so I'm just really upset. Well, yeah, that could be factually pr- true, but it doesn't mean that thought is led by the Spirit, Right? You, you get home, and what's the first words, right? You know? Every, every one of these things, you can fill. You can fill your life with these thoughts of blame, of complaint, of gossip. And then, next thing you know, you wonder why you're all stressed out and angst. Our thoughts are powerful. Researchers show that we have thousands of thoughts every day. And these thoughts develop patterns. And what so many people don't realize is they have neural pathways. They've always blamed their spouse. Don't amen that. I don't know who that was, but <laughs> you go down that lane. How many know it takes work to not complain? Oh, please, somebody tell them, help me out. Somebody like, well, I don't know about you, Jordan. You must mean to be sanctified by the Spirit because all my thoughts are spirit, kindness, love, joy, peace, patience. I am a fruit-bearing tree. <laughs> no, you're not. No, you are not. Right? Trust me, I do a lot of marital counseling, and the minute they open up, let me tell you about her, right? <laughs> let me tell you about her. And I just want to say, well, what about you? And that's how so much good... Like, what, what is God teaching you that you need to change? Whoa, Pastor Jordan, whoa, we're not doing any reflection on me today. No, 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 Pastor Jordan, what I'm doing is I am going to put all the blame on my spouse. And that, oh, that's why I'm here. Come on, amen? 